So we just finished a problem, our first row reduction problem. <coughs> We're going to do a few more row reduction problems now. We are going to do all these problems using matrices. So the first equation, x minus 2y plus z equals 0. Next equation, 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds y minus z equals negative 1. And last equation, minus x plus 4 4y plus 2z equals 13. So step one is write the augmented matrix. So you're just picking off all the coefficients and writing them in the matrix. So go ahead and do that right now. So again, our strategy, we want to clear out row one, or column one. So to clear out column one, is there a way to deal with the fractions in the second row? What operation can I do to get rid of these thirds? Multiply by three. Multiply by three. So let's go ahead and do that, get out of fraction land. So now we have a matrix with no fractions. We're going to work on uh, column one. There's already a one in the upper left corner. So we're going to use that one to knock out the two and the negative one below. So we're going to use that one to clear column one. So I'm going to subtract two row one to row two. That will turn that, will turn that two to a zero. How many row ones do I have to add to row three? Just one. Just one row one. You could write plus one row one, or you could just write plus row one. So we're going to add row one to row three. So again, I'm going slow because this is new. Right now, I'm going to pick up the speed and go way faster as we do more examples. So in <clears throat> We're doing row two first. Negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Negative two times negative two is four plus two is six. Negative two times one is negative two minus three is minus five. And last up, zero minus three is minus three. And now copying the other two rows over. Oh, I'm not copying row three over. Now we're going to perform the row operation on row 3 now. So this one's easy. We're just adding row 1 to row 3. So we have 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus 2 plus 4 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0 plus 13 is 13. So any row operation questions on row 2 or 3? So column one is finished. We're ready to move on to column two. So let's think about column two. Should I use the six or the bottom two to clear out column two? Let's go with that bottom two. So we're going to use the two to knock out everything else in column two. I could 
multiply by a half first and turn the 2 into a 1, but the problem is 13 and the 3 will turn into halves. So I'm going to avoid that. I don't need to multiply by a half here. I can just use that 2. So to row 1, I'm going to add row 3. So that, minus, that 2 cancels the minus 2 when I add. Now I want to knock out the 6 in row 2. So to knock out the 6, how many row 3's do I have to add? Three. Positive 3 or negative 3? Three? Three. Negative 3 row 3. So that will give me negative 6 plus 6, that will be 0. So we'll do row 1 first. So we have 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 plus 1 is 4. 13 plus 0 is 13. Now row 2. We have to be careful. It's times negative 3 row 3. So we have negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Negative 9 minus 5 is negative 14. And negative 39 minus 3 is negative 42. And the last row just gets copied down. Any questions on those operations? All right, column two is almost taken care of. At some point, I need to turn that two into a one, but I don't have to do it right now. I can wait until uh, later. So let's go work on column three. Uh, before we do that, <coughs> what two rows should I swap? Two and three. So let's swap two and three. That will put the zeros where I want them, give me that lower triangle of zeros. So row swaps are usually pretty easy to do. Second row is 0, 2, 3, 13. And the third row is 0, 0, negative 14, negative 42. Now I see the triangle of zeros. At this moment, I know there's no free variables because I can see all the variables getting locked down right there. So I can tell there's no free variables at this point. So let's focus on column 3. I could use the negative 14 and take out the 3 and the 4, except I'm going to have crazy fractions. So what can I multiply row 3 by to get, uh, turn that negative 14 into a 1? So I want to turn that into a 1. So negative 1 14th. And 42 over negative 14 is 3. Positive 3. All right, now we can clear out column 3. So now we're going to use the 1 and clear out everything else in column 3. So how many row 3's do I add to row 1? How many row 3's do I add to row 1 to cancel that 4? Negative 4. Negative 4. And now we're going to knock out the 3. It's really similar. We just go negative 3, row 3. So that'll knock out the 4 and the 3. So row 1 is now 1, 0, 0. Negative 12 plus 13 is positive 1. Row 2 is 0, 2. 0, negative 9 plus 13 is 4. All right, we're almost there into reduce row echelon form. What's the last thing that I need to do before we write the equations back out? 
So how do I make that 201? That's the 2. So we're multiplying by a half in that row, and that will turn row 2 into 0102. And if you need to, you can absolutely write the uh, variables in here. So row one is x, row, uh, column one is x, column two is y, column three is z. If you need to write those down, just to remember your variables. So we got one x equals one, one y equals two, one z equals three. And if we write it as a point, We have one, two, three. So row operations, you need to learn how to perform them and do them relatively quickly because a lot of things in this chapter revolve around row operations. So we'll do one more example. So write out the matrix you get. So this matrix is not too bad. We already have a one in the upper left corner. So we can start eliminating uh, everything, in column, everything else in column one. How many row ones do I add to row two? Negative two. And row three, I just go minus one row one. So I want you to do all the row operations to reduce this down. And I'll walk around and answer any questions, and I'll give you three minutes for this. I don't know. 
honestly. Peanut butter? No, not peanut butter. I don't like peanut butter. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it like it. I wouldn't eat it in bed. You wouldn't eat it in bed? What? Toast. It's not on peanut butter. I'm not on toast. Peanut butter doesn't go on toast. Not peanut butter. Yes, it does. No, butter doesn't go on toast. No, peanut butter does. And honey. Or bananas. Or jam. Except I don't like peanut butter and jam. That's kind of weird. That's peanut butter and jam. I know, I don't like it. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> same resolution as it is. Hmm? I can't see. I guess we should just continue, and then we'll get the solution. Well, we get no solution right there. Because that's the same zero, one, one can equal three and negative six. Just keep going. What will be the next step? Um, subtract <laughs> row one from the rest of the two. No, because then that would make negative one. And negative one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, what if we switched? No. Well, no, because if we no, just we didn't do that. Well, subtract row three from row one. So minus row three, you will get one. One negative one plus one is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. And six plus six is twelve. Six is six. Plus six is twelve. Why are you doing plus? Because you have to do plus. Whoops. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but how far did you get to when you found that out? Instead of dividing by negative one third, or multiplying by negative one third, you switch the rows. Well, no, I just feel like it was so. Walker, he's gonna do it on the board. So all of you should add this as your second step. If you kept going, you may have made different decisions, but this should be your second step. So any questions on getting to this step? All right, so column one's done. We're moving into column two. 
There is a choice to make here, and they're both reasonable uh, decisions. I could pretty easily turn row two into something nicer. What can I multiply row two by? Negative one third. That works out, doesn't give us fractions, everything is a multiple of three. So it's not gonna give us any fractions. So let's go ahead and do that. The other option is I could have used the one to knock out everything in column two. That would have been a very good choice as well. All right, what next? What is next in our strategy? So you, you can use either of these two ones. I'm gonna use the one in the middle because that's where I want the one to end up at the end. So I'm gonna use that one to knock out both entries in that column. So I do minus row two, and on the bottom we have another minus row two. So take another minute and perform these row operations. solution in the second step. It's easier to overcome something if 
you're battling it with other people rather than by yourself in secret. So, right here, when we see that 0, 1, 1 equals 3 and 0, 1, 1 equals negative 6, can we just say it's no solution right there, or do we have to go farther to say 0 equals negative 9? Go further. Oh, gosh, dear. No, there's one step. Sometimes. No, I mean, your question is how early can I say it's obviously no solution? Yeah. Okay. I would say it's not entirely obvious at that step. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and perform these operations. Row 1 is going to get modified. 1, 0, 0, 3. Row 2 is copied the way it is. Row 3 is going to change. 0, 0, 0, minus 9. All right, so it looks like we have a free variable. It looks like z should be free. However, let's write out all the equations right now. So let's write the three equations we get. The first one is easy, x equals 3. Second one, there's no x's, but we have y plus z equals 3. Still no problem. Third equation, 0 equals negative 9. What x, y, z values make 0 equal to negative 9? Can you ever satisfy that equation? No. Nope. So that equation is always going to be false. So no matter what you pick for x, y, and z, that equation will not be satisfied. So this is not able to be satisfied. So we get no solution. You can also say inconsistent. So no solution is the same as writing inconsistent. So I got a question which was basically how early can you say no solution? So my answer to that is when it's obvious, and I don't think it's obvious until you have a row of zeros ending in not zero. That's when it's obvious. So technically, if you have enough intuition, you can tell me no solution in the previous step. If you have a truckload of intuition, you might be able to tell me that step or maybe even way up here. But I would say it's way less obvious the further back you go. You can just, it's like, it's like seeing steps ahead. So all the solutions we got in the last few problems were all either no solution or just single points. So I want to focus on how to write free variable solutions. So we'll go with uh, one free variable first. So let's say you end up with two equations. So we can clean this up a tiny bit. <clears throat> I could, if this is our system, I could knock out a clean up column two a little bit. But if I clean up column two, column three is going to look a little worse. That zero in column three is not, or the zero in, in the column three won't be there anymore. So if I do this operation, it's totally OK. To do this, we'll go minus row 2. That gives us 1, 0, negative 3, negative 2. Now, if you're an overambitious person, you might think, ah, oh, I can use this 3 to knock out the 3 right above it, or minus 3 right above it. Question? Um, if you subtracted row 2, wouldn't that make it 1 in the second column? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, sure would. So you need to subtract 2 row 2? Yeah, I need minus 2 row 2. So that'll mess up that entire row. 
So we'll go minus 2, row 2. 1, 0, minus 6. Minus 12 plus 4 is minus 8. So we got column one, column two. Now you can still look in column three and think, ah, oh, well I can get rid of that minus six. How would I get rid of that minus six? Plus two row two. Plus two row two. So go ahead and perform that operation. That matrix looks familiar. So you can't, in this case, you can't clear both column two and column three. The best you can do is clear one of the two. So it doesn't matter which of these versions you go with. Uh, I'm going to recommend this one right here as our final uh, matrix because column one and two are clear and column three is not. So we're going to go off of this. I don't need this last matrix. What I wanted to show you was <clears throat> you can't necessarily always clear every column. And the reason you can't clear the third column is because there's a free variable here. So let's look at this matrix. All right, I'm going to circle the uh, ones that lock down variables. We have x, y, z, and our constants over here. So what this tells me is x and y are fixed, are locked down. The variable z, there's no 1 down below. So z is free. So whenever you have a free variable, we're going to let z equal t and then write, write our equations out. So our equations are x minus 6z equals minus 8. Our second equation is y plus 3z equals 6. There is not a third equation, but I have this let z equal t. So I'll write that down here. So I want to do some work and end up with a solution that looks like x, y, z equals something. So that's the way I want my solution to look. x, y, z equals something. Well, I already know what z is. z is t. So that's easy to fill that in. What about x and y? So the way we're going to figure out what x and y are, I have them written down. All I'm going to do is solve for them. So I'm going to solve for x and then solve for y. And this is easy linear algebra to do. So we get x equals negative 8 plus 6z. And the last step, I'm going to substitute t in for z. So that's x. Now we're going to figure out what y is from the second equation. So y equals 6 minus 3z. And now substituting t in. It's 6 minus 3t. Once we know x and y, we get to fill them in right here. So x is minus 8 plus 6t, and y is 6 minus 3t. So any questions about getting x and y, figuring out what x and y are in terms of t. And t could be anything. So t is any real number. <coughs> now if we were graphing this solution, what would the graph of this solution look like? What shape would this take? We have one free variable. It would be a line. So that's what we'd be looking at, a line in three dimensions. So that's how uh, one free variable can look in your solution. So this is one free variable. We're going to look at two free variables next. So 
two, three free variables is going to look similar. So we have the same x, y, z, and a constant. There are no row operations to do, really. If you have only one row, the swap is useless. Multiplying another row and adding it to this row is not going to change anything. The only thing you do is multiply by a non-zero number. But I already have a 1 right there, so I don't need to multiply by anything. So we don't need any row operations here. However, what I want you to see in this form, x is locked down. y is not locked down, and z is not locked down either. So this is how you see two free variables. Now what you're more commonly going to see is the second and third row filled up with zeros. This is more likely what you're going to see in your matrix, is rows of zeros. And of course, rows of zeros correspond to the equation 0 equals 0. So they don't really tell you anything. So if you have a row of zeros, you can basically erase it. It doesn't tell you anything useful. All right. So y is free and z is free. So we're going to let y equal t and let z equal. I can't use t again, but I'll use s. Most people choose s and t for these variables. And now we're going to write the first uh, line. We're going to write the equation that corresponds to that first line, which is x plus 2y plus 3z equals 4. So we're going to do some work. And what I want my solution to look like is the exact same form. x, y, z equals some uh, point in three dimensions. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time. I want to know what x is. So we're going to solve for x. So I subtract. So we got 4 minus 2y minus 3z is x. And now substitute in s and t. So I said y was t, so we have 4 minus 2t minus 3s. So there's my x equation. My y equation is easy, it's just t. And my z equation is just s. This is any real numbers, s and t. So this is what my solution will look like. So any questions writing down the solution? It's always going to look like a point, usually three dimensions. It can absolutely be in two dimensions or four dimensions. But generally, they'll be in three dimensions. So some uh, homework problems, some web work problems. Are written as uh, vertical <coughs> equations. So they might be, if this was the answer, they would write it like this. So y is just t. Z is S. So you could write vertically instead of horizontally. And just use what's on the top, middle, and bottom to correspond to X, Y, and Z instead of separating with commas. And there's one or two questions that you have to separate things out the way I'm about to write. So I'm going to write everything with s's and t's. So y has got no constant, so it's 0 plus 1t plus 0s. And then the z is 0 plus 0t 
plus 1s. And then you can split this into 3. And now I'm just going to factor the t and the s out. So there's one or two Weber problems that want it separated out like this. So this is only, uh, you only have to write your answer like this for a couple of homework problems. So this is really only for some Weber problems. If you go further in uh, linear algebra, you'll write solutions out like this. Or if you go to calculus 3 or 4, you'll sometimes write like this as well. Uh, but for our class, I won't have you write like this on any quizzes or midterms. So you can just write, well, at this point, quiz or final. So this is how I want to see your answers most of the time. So we're going to start on determinants next. So a good quiz day for this could be Thursday or Friday for row, row operations.